Hi guys, it's a very, very exciting time. So a lot of you woke up this morning to find that you can now make clothing for uh, your avatars on Horizon Worlds because it's currently been restricted to partners, but Matter have just blown it wide open now. So even you can do it, um, providing you're a Matter Horizon creator uh, program member, um, which we'll go into in just a second. Um, so today I've got some really great tips to help you get started quickly if you're confused. Um, we'll be covering uh, how to make your first couple pieces of clothing via two methods. One will be using the pure AI route uh, and the second one will basically be starting off with a bit of AI uh, and then we'll actually be using that then to place our own custom graphics uh, onto clothing and then re-upload it and publish it. Then we'll go on misting it into the store um, so you can actually then sell your clothing and wear your clothing, um, set the price, etc. And then we'll go into obviously uh, putting it into one of your worlds that you can sell it to people. Like you can run your own sort of little mini malls or shops or what have you. Um, yeah, so okay, stay tuned. Let's let's get started. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. You hear enough surface level talk about the metaverse from complete outsiders. I'm here to show you what really goes on for the perspective of someone who actually lives it, runs clubs, and arranges social events across multiple platforms. I explore worlds, meet new and interesting people everywhere I go, and I bring you exclusive sneak peeks of what's happening inside. I also live stream regularly, so you can experience it with me in real time, and I make tutorials to help you build your own VR clubs, hangouts, and art spaces. If you're ready to see the Massiverse from the inside, hit that like button, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram and TikTok for even more content. Let's get started. Okay, so as I mentioned before, um, you are going to need to be on the NHCP, the Meta Horizon Creator Program. The good news is, it's very easy to sign up, it costs you nothing. You just gotta head over to this site and actually register an interest, and you'll know if you've been accepted usually within a few days. Um, but yeah, with that out of the way, once you're on that, um, well, we're on to uh, the principles. So, when you're designing clothing, here's some great bits of guidance from the content guidelines. So, number one, no nudity. You've got to limit your sexy times, right? You can't have too much of it. They will take your stuff down if you'd see that. Um, two, uh, no violence. Yeah, you can't have depictions of violence on your clothing. That is absolutely not allowed. Um, three, no profanity, so you can't have swear words written across it, you know, there's, there's kids around, like, you can't do it. I have them. And of course, number four, uh, no IP infringement. Nobody wants to get sued, um, and if you go around putting, you know, a thick, highly sought after brands on your clothing, uh, you might find legal teams, uh, should start filing cease and desist against you. You don't want that, trust me. That's not a good pass. For any further advice on what is and isn't allowed on Horizon Worlds, and um, check the Meta developer portal and just have a little look through their content guidelines for, you know, prohibited stuff um, and guidelines on what you can and can't do. Remember that all clothing right now needs to be acceptable for all ages, that is ages 10 and up. So. Oh, don't get too spicy. Okay, so a few things that you'll need before we get started. Um, you will need some sort of graphics editing software, Photoshop, Affinity, heck, either Microsoft Paint or maybe even Canva will do. Um, you know, just something that allows you to edit images and save them as PNGs afterwards. Um, yeah, uh, apart from that, the rest is done through the web, so let's, let's go. Um, so first things first. But since first, you just need to point your web browser um, over at horizon.meta.com slash creator slash avatars. Now that'll take you into your account and into your sort of creator tool section. Uh, and it should show you um, any outfits that you've made already now, if this is your first time, probably now. Okay, so at the top right, you've got the create avatar button. So if we just sort of click that, um, then that should take us into a selection of the clothing item that we want to start creating. So we have, uh, just on the left hand side, we have uh, tops, the bottoms, shoes, dresses, and outfits currently. Those expected to maybe expand just a little bit over time, but uh, you've got a great selection across all these categories. Um, definitely enough to start going on. So have a little browse and find the item you want to, uh, you want to tailor. 
We can so skip through some of the varieties that are currently available. MSR adding well all the time, so keep your eyes on it, okay? And there is definitely more coming. Um, uh, even a suit of armor in the outfits. But for today, we're just gonna do a simple t-shirt, okay? Um, so if we just sort of click on the t-shirt, now we've ticked on the t-shirt. We get to actually see the t-shirt in 3D. We can tail it around by clicking and dragging. And and then we can also see on the right hand side we've got the UV mapped texture. Now for those of you who have done the 3D editing will be very familiar of what a UDP V map is, but that's just basically a flattened layout of the texture that's on the t-shirt. Now this is quite difficult to visualize at first when you're looking at this. You can kind of see in, in this particular model, uh, the front is at the top left, the back is at the top right, and the shoulders are respectively down the bottom. Uh, and you'll see in just a second, we're gonna use the pure AI route um, to actually uh, generate a t-shirt. There's, there's a few little bits in here which are of interest. So we've got the view UV grid down the bottom, which will allow us to overlay the actual UV nut grid on uh, the texture and also the item itself, which is great for sort of visualizing what goes where. Uh, you can also download both the texture up here and also the UV grid. So here he's got the download options here. Um, so we can download both the UV grid and also the current texture, or, or both, uh, we can do. And if we download both, I believe they come down in a zip file. Uh, we'll have to extract that, but we get to start first of all by using the AI generator to create our own custom design. So I'm just going to ask for a really simple uh, design, just by typing in something along the lines of a, a pink clean t-shirt with an ice cream on the front. So that's going to be a pretty predictable design. Um, I think the enhanced prompting there in the bottom just sort of looks at the wording we've put in and then improves the prompt and then designs it. So a bit of magic there. Um, so you can see that the design just sort of pops through in, in just a moment. Okay, so there's our design. Incredibly simple, just a pink t-shirt with a mighty around it. Exactly what we asked for. Now, you, you can of course, you can of course save this. You can you can sell this if you want, just this design. And a lot of people are finding, uh, you know, success in just using the pure AI tools. If you prompt it right, you can create some really attractive designs and you put them out, they will actually know fast. This is the sort of platform Escher has given us to, to work with. It's actually amazing. Um, but honestly, we're not going to do that today. We're going to take that one step further. So we're going to ask for a plain design. It's something plain. So we're going to ask for just a plain blue t-shirt. Uh, and then that should pump out a design for that. And then you'll see what happens next. Be a little bit of magic. Okay, so you can see that it's pumped out a plain blue t-shirt. Exactly not be asked for. Duh, which is wonderful. Um, and that's an ideal way to start your own custom textured designs, in fact. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to have a little look at the way it's sort of UV laid it out. And we're going to download that plain design. Um, and then we can sort of see that locally and, and edit it in our favourite sort of uh, peak package, if you like. Create our own amazing things. So to do that, we just have to make sure we are saving the texture. Inside the zip, once we've downloaded it, you can see we've got the two files because we selected the UV and the texture. But it's the texture that we want to edit. A UV is only really a guide, we don't need to re-upload that at all. Um, but you know, you can see they're just sat there in a, in a directory shed you need them. Um, so yeah, node up the, in the blue, sort of the, the texture.png in your favourite paid packets and we'll, we'll get to work guys. So here we are, we're using uh, Affinity because we don't want to pay for Photoshop. <laughs> Affinity is great. Um, so first of all, I'm going to... Don't just go upscale the texture to 204.8. You don't have to do this, but it, it will result, could result in a much higher definition result when we come to export, but we look for steps required to that. So now we've done that, um, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go and get um, a texture. Yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna take this one that I made earlier, uh, which is an enemy me sitting on a mushroom with cars, uh, and we're just gonna sort of scale her down uh, and put a, Actually, a little bit centered a little t-shirt. I know the first time you do this, you might have to have several goes at centering, um, centering the design. And you can see when you upload it, you can sort of adjust and then re-upload it again. And, but yeah, don't get it. Don't worry if you don't get it right first time. Just keep retrying. So um, the other thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna take another decal, which is obviously my sif, my logo, uh, and we're gonna first of all show you how to line that up on the back. Um, but. You can see we can sort of put that on the back piece there, and if, if we were to upload that, then it would be quite a nice design in itself. 
I would do have some designs where I've done that sort of back piece. Um, but really, actually, do you know, I rethink it might be quite nice to put that on the side so we can put it on one of the sleeves. Um, so you'll get to see which sleeve that is when you come to upload it. Um, it's probably a little bit nosier, but you know, whatever, we'll, we'll carry on. We can always redo it if we need to. Um, great. Okay, so from there all in, we need to just uh, save that. We need to save it back as a PNG. Um, so I can use the export function and what the export function will allow us to do in here is if you have it you don't have to do this bit but you can as you see just further down it, the file needs to be below at the moment two megabytes okay it can't exceed that so what we can do is we can keep adjusting the resolution just a little bit lower from our source which is 2048 until we get it just below just below two megabytes and that will ensure that we get a, a pretty nice um high resolution result without sort of breaking the rules, without breaking the limit. Because if we try and upload something higher than two megabytes, it will stop us, okay? So that's really important. Um, we have to make sure that we are playing within those rules. Um, but yeah, at the same time, uh, the higher the resolution you can get it, the better it's going to look uh, in all environments. So but just a point of note, actually, they can sometimes look blurry inside worlds because the renderer might source the image. Um, but, you know, you might find that actually it's, um, it, it's, it's downscaling it to make sure the world you're in still well efficiently. So you can see we've now uploaded that via the upload texture fold button. And that's looking great. That's looking absolutely great. So I'm really happy with that result. So the next thing we do, we're gonna hit save at the top. Um, and then that's gonna allow us to, um, yeah, commit that. If we do have a problem with, we have something a bit naughty in our texture, it's gonna tell us at this point, the AI sort of scans it, chance for swear words or, or sexy bits and it will knock us back. But we can also hit set price and listing details to then jog on to the next bit, uh, which will allow us to uh, move on to setting a price. Now, prices are done in Matic credits, okay? Um, so you'll have to check what the approximates are by trying to buy some credits and see how much you buy them for. Um, but yeah, give it a name, of course, um, something, something that's highly searchable. And the reason I say that is because when you list this, if you list it with the allow people to acquire it side of worlds, uh, search terms matter. So what you put in the title uh, will help the discoverability of your product. Um, so do make sure you do that. What's your level description? Now you have to decide on a price. Now shop around. Have a look around what other creators are doing for prices. Um, because you don't want to underprice yourself uh, for the asset you've put into this. But also, you know, if you owe a price, then people just simply won't buy it. So uh, you decide that's going to change over time. Um, and again, it's probably a good thing to leave, uh, but allow people to acquire it side of your wills on. That means that it'll be listed in a general avatar store. It gives it much higher visibility. If you don't tick that box, you'll have to create a shop world. And that's the only place that people will be able to buy the items. So I would leave that on. Notice that all items have age ranges and currently is set to 10 plus, so all ages can now went. Um, so great, this is just the confirmation now that we get to see that all went through okay. There's no list in the store, people can actually buy that item. Um, you can't currently search for avatar items in, in the overall store, but well, that's in the story for another day. So now we're into the Horizon Worlds desktop editor. Uh, this is something that's available for free from uh, Meta, if you haven't got it, do grab it. Um, so we're going to go into the commerce section at the top, okay? And then we're going to list an avatar item. This is how we add it to the inventory of the world. It's a very important first step. Now we can see the item, we select it. Just click the list button down the bottom. But that adds it to the overall inventory of the world. So if you go into that world, you'll actually see it in the shop screen. Uh, if you can't find it in the world, you'll notice this as you travel around. So next thing you have to do uh once you've done that is you have to go and grab an in-world purchase gizmo so that's in the gizmos menu um and if you just scroll down a little you'll see an in-world purchase and when you grab that um you'll be able to see um the item just there that's cool so that is a, it's a bit of a multifunctional one but so now we're gonna set the um, the actual UI property to a button because you want a button that people can tick when they enter the will. And currently nothing's displayed. Why? Because there's no item assigned to it yet. So we're going to do that now. So we've just set that to in-world items and the t-shirt is our only in-world item. You can see now the price has appeared on it. So that's great, but that's just a blank floating price. So if we go into down the bottom, uh, 
into your assets, go to avatar rights, and you'll see a model of your clothing which you can just drag out and put into the display. So you can kind of couple that up with your price tag. I'll take a little bit of arrangement, but once you've done that, uh, it's all there for you. Um, yeah, just move it around. Make sure the, the price tag's not inside the clothing. That might make it quite difficult to see. So you can put it just in front, above it, below it. However you want to lay it out, right? There's no, there's no wrong answers there. But yeah, once you've done that, you've got yourself a button. Other people can go run up to and just buy that item for 200 credits. You're done. That's it. That's all there is to it. So yeah, I hope that was useful to you guys. Uh, I think in the next video, what we'll do is we'll go into maybe how to stencil. So for example, with uh, leggings, um, you'll notice that the butt cheeks are on either side of um, the UV map. So you have to use a technique called stenciling if you want, for example, one logo to cover and um, both both thumb cheeks uh, spread across because uh, if you don't, it'll let on it's a might meta line it up. So we'll go into stenciling on Blender. Join me next time. Thank you. Goodbye.